just did a workshop this past summer. I want to loop back a little thing, uh, which uh, I said it was going to be my last workshop that I was going to do. And people who had worked with me a lot, a lot of people came back after years, and there were like 25 of them. We decided they wanted to film it. So they raised quite a bit of money, you know, thousands to film it. And I was concerned because in my summer workshops, it's even more intimate, intimate than this. There's a lots of naked work. There's lots of intimate work. How can we film this? And they want to film it and distribute it. So uh, yes, I said the condition to take the workshop was signing a release. So everybody signed a release. That was no problem. The students signed a release and all. But still, I didn't want them to be inhibited. So my solution then, which we didn't use for this, but I might do it if we did Dionysus film again, was to make cameras available to everybody in the workshop. So to say there are filmmakers, and they're going to be here, and the, there is a sound guy. But also the filmmakers have to participate to some degree. So occasionally the filmmakers were undressed. And the, uh, and the actual people in the workshop had uh, not the big, nice cameras that the filmmakers have, but little flip cameras and smaller cameras. But we got an extra three or 400 hours of footage that now the filmmakers going over to some of it's very good. Because sometimes they held it, sometimes they strapped it on their bodies. And at any time, you could drop out to make a film. But be, that made them much less inhibited, because they were also the agents of the film. But in this Dionysus thing, it wasn't so. There were, there were uh, two cameras working. Uh, that's all. Uh, so there were four. It's a four-camera shoot if you do two days. Uh, and uh, people were, I think, I think it was about 80% as uninhibited as they were in the, uh, in the regular in the regular uh, play, but not entirely. But still, it's, it seemed pretty warm uh, watching it, <laughs> and uh, they were they were doing uh, they were doing quite quite well. I would say the dances were about the same, with or without the camera. The caress would have would have been a little uh, even a little more intimate than it was, and uh, sexual than it was at the end if there hadn't been cameras and if the lights had been a little dimmer because they couldn't film what was going on underneath the towers when that caress got going. Only if you were up on the platform were you not in it. There were like, if there were 200 people in the room, 100 of them were doing this kind of group grope, as it was called at that time. But it's also, you know, a period of time when that kind of thing was more common. It's not really common now. But uh, group gropes, or, you know, but prior to mosh pits in a certain <laughs> way, you know, getting together and just feeling whatever you can and enjoying it, closing your eyes and kissing whatever happens to be presented to your mouth and go searching and so on, was something that people were doing uh, more or less. So it wasn't unfamiliar territory. And again, I was playing with that and wanting to go so far and then turn it around. I mean, at, that, at a certain moment, the actors are supposed to start uh, to bite the uh, spectators and scratch at them and really hurt them. You know, till they get the fuck out of there. So at the beginning, the, the actors would say, I don't want to hurt them. I said, well, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want them in your death ritual. Get them out of there. Scare them. Say, the person you've been kissing, take their ear and chomp on it. They'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, they did. <laughs> and I think it's not to draw blood or something, but to, but to accept. It's, I always think of theater as like sports. I don't want uh, football players to get concussions. I wish there was a way around that, but I, I like contact sports so, and, and game rules. And I think that uh, theater is much too timid in relation to sports. And there are reasons why sports are so popular and theater is less popular. I, I think theater must maintain its intellectual integrity and its artistic integrity, but I also think it can learn a lot from a popular entertainment and sports uh, about commitment. I'm curious as to how it evolved in the period of the run, and then whatever happened to all these 12 people uh, afterwards? Well, f first of all, there were a core group of people, but other passed through, like Rayon Rubenstein, Ron Schenk, I see them in there. They were only with us for a couple of months, so there were people that passed through, and then there were core group members. At a certain point, you're quite correct, uh, Bill F Shepard, Joan McIntosh, at least the two of them, oh, Pat McDermott, they were all enrolled at NYU's very elite uh, 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 graduate acting program, and when they started working with me, and I was a faculty member, but not in the acting program, in the, what was then the drama program, the, uh, their acting teacher said, well, you either have to drop out of Schechner's production or drop out of school, and those three of them dropped out of school, two other people that had been working with me dropped out of the production because they wanted to get their MFA. The acting technique is not that, uh, uh, it's not absolutely separate from Stanislavskyism. Uh, uh, especially if it's the Stanislavski of the late period, the method of physical actions. 
uh, rather than the Stanislavski of emotional recall. Uh, uh, of course, it's not proscenium, proscenium theater either. So it, it's related to what Peter Brook was working with at that time in his theater of cruelty seasons. Uh, and, and a lot of the, so it's a kind of amalgamation of Meyerhold, who was the director, I, Western director I admire most, Brecht, who I admire a great deal, and Stanislavski, whose underlying humanity I also admire. So that was still uh, uh, practiced to some degree. In terms of what they're doing now, uh, Bill Shepard, who played Pentheus, uh, I don't know if he's retired yet, but he became a professor at the uh, Florida International University, and he wrote a book called The Dionysus Book about his experiences. Joan McIntosh has made many uh, movies in uh, theater, and this year she played Agave in, uh, in Central Park, in Shakespeare in the Park, in Joanne Acolytus' production. So at last she played it alone. <laughs> I claim it as a single, as a single uh, uh, credit. Uh, Sam Blazer passed away. He's the one at, at the end who says, know these things, Dionysus is the son of Zeus. Uh, Bill Finley uh, uh, made a couple of more movies and then became a painter, and he's still a painter. That's what he does. Uh, uh, I, I don't really know what happened to uh, all, all of them. I, uh, Oh, Pat McDermott was in the, the French Connection, some other movies, and I think he's also uh, dead now. Uh, I, I, I think AIDS uh, took him. Uh, uh, I never knew what Richard Dia did. Margaret Ryan, who's one of the women, married, uh, was always with this uh, guy from uh, Sweden, and uh, they finally married and moved to Sweden. She does acting there, but not that much because she doesn't know Swedish, so she can only do <laughs> acting in Sweden where they want English. I mean, Swedes basically speak English, but they don't do their plays in English. Uh, so uh, they, they've had a whole wide range of, uh, of life, both in and out of theater and uh, film. The second version of the performance group, which I began after Dionysus, uh, they had a much more... Uh, 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 consistently uh, successful work in the in the uh, in the uh, movie industry. I'm having coffee next week with Willem Dafoe, who was in that group, Spalding Gray. I just did a play which opened last night in New York uh, called "Swimming to Spalding" about Spalding. Uh, other other people in the Worcester group, all of whom most of whom I worked with, they've all stayed and done quite well. This Dionysus group. Uh, were more, they're very intense, but they were more, uh, and that's what broke us up afterwards, they were more, uh, I trained them, perhaps it was my error, I trained them for this performance, and, 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 and the intensity of this production, and the intensity of their relations, uh, once uh, the group broke up, and it was me that broke it up, that's a, another story, once that particular group broke up and reconstituted itself, they weren't able to uh, work to, Together in that way again with anybody. So as I said, some went on to pretty successful careers like Joan, and some ch changed careers like Bill Finley, and some became academics, and uh, uh, Shepard also worked with Grotowski for a while. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the best. What did you do as an immediate sequel to this? Uh, we did Macbeth, a uh, word I should not utter in the theater. <laughs> yeah. That's it, I Years you rather time. I spelled it. I spelled it. I spelled it with a K, and I, I, it was uh, it was done. It was not. It was all of Shakespeare's words. But my way of making the text is I could not use any words that he didn't use. But I didn't have to use them in the order he did. And, and so it was a very peculiar production. Finley played uh, the Scot, and uh, Priscilla Seal Smith. Oh, Priscilla Smith. She went on to a big career also. She married Andre Chabon, who's in a lot of her his production, still makes theater. She's sealed, but she now goes by the name of Priscilla, that, which is her real name. She was the lady, and uh, Jason and Joan and Richard Dia were the three dark powers, which were all the uh, uh, witches and the other stuff. Uh, Ramey Barkley, who's the young woman you see at the end, are you people proud of it, who uh, bites and has the blood dripping, uh, played Banquo. Uh, Bill Shepard, who uh, played uh, Malcolm. And then new people, Spalding Gray came in in that production, and uh, Stephen Borst, who I worked with for many, many, many years. Are we out of time? We are out of time. Well, thank you so much for being here.